Now, we're moving up towards the top of the hour, and I'm utterly thrilled to bits about this next item, because we at home have an Exmoor pony called Dormouse, and if you follow me on social media, you will have seen the shenanigans of Dormouse as I film him running about and uh, misbehaving on my little camera. Uh, but my next guest has gone one better than that. You see, the, the, now that's Harriet that belongs to Clemmy. Just wait, and there goes Dormouse, you see, last but not least. We love all of our animals, but Exmoor's are real characters, and the truth has been brilliant captured by my next guest, not on camera, uh, but actually in this lovely, lovely book. Dawn Westcott is the co-founder of the Exmoor Pony Project and has written this book in rhyming style about the life and adventures uh, of a moorland Exmoor foal called Rowan, inspired by her Exmoor ponies and many of the other real-life Exmoor pony characters that she has uh, met. It's aimed at children, rhyming verse, but it's also aimed at adults like us to be aware of an endangered species. It's to help raise funds for the ponies that she's helping coordinate a uh, collection of field data for the Equus Survival Trust in the United States, which is providing funding to create DNA profiles and a new database uh, for the breeding herd. How did these incredible, sturdy, brilliant creatures become an endangered species? Um, I think it all sort of happened towards the end of the Second World War. Um, unfortunately, um, they were kind of used as a source of food. Um, there weren't many anyway, and I think the population got reduced down to about 50 ponies and about six stallions, so it was a tiny bottleneck of the gene pool that had to be kind of worked up and so expanded. It's a, so what you guys are up to, and I guess we're a part of it as well, is a twin-track strategy, and that is to, to keep them going. Uh, I mean, we've got Dormouse, as you well know, um, uh, but also to fund research and store DNA. And we had Tullis on uh, talking about uh, a whole range of animals last week weekend talking about the same sort of thing so it's a twin track approach it's to keep those that we're blessed still to have going and in yeah. good nick but also to build up that database and that dna bank as well and it's slightly complicated with exmoor ponies because you do have a closed stud book with a pedigree population which is quite small um but because it's closed, you have a population of Exmoor ponies outside of the stud book too, particularly abroad, certainly some of the moorland herds on Exmoor. So there's no way, once they're out of that stud book, you know, if they get missed or a mare that's been missed, then breeds... Is that Exmoor we're ball. looking at at the moment? We're looking at our herd. Our oh, Brit. Just for, around the people, front. people tune in on radio as well as on <laughs> telly. But just if you if you're on radio, you're missing a, a herd of brilliant yeah, exmoors gallivanting yeah. around. And that's on the way to the ponds. So they can have a good splash. Um, but you've got the pedigree herd and the closed stud book, which yeah. is which is um, recorded and, and lineage tracked. But this population, which is outside, is is lost. So with a tiny endangered population, we obviously need those genetics. And because quite a lot of those ponies are living in their authentic, free-living, semi-feral situations, yeah. they're retaining the characteristics and the, and the resilience and robustness of the true Exmoor pony. Yeah. So this um, project with the Equus Survival Trust is taking DNA from some of those ponies that are not in the stud book and some of the ponies in the stud book where there are still, you know, delays in getting passports and delays in verifying the parentage of their progeny. So we're just trying to help yeah. to do all things. It, it's a brilliant project. The late Queen was a big supporter of endangered breeds and rare breeds, wasn't she? The, the, she loved her native ponies and her mountain and moorland ponies. But a, a mini stud at Balmoral for them. I yeah, the remember. Highlands, yeah. um, and she loved her fell ponies, and darling Emma, who yeah. stood there, you know, at the funeral, just... I, I remember yeah. meeting the woman who ran it for her at uh, Olympia, the, um, the horse show there once, and uh, it's the enthusiasm yeah. that comes across. Is the official equestrian world behind you and supporting of you? Um, I think the Rare Breed Survival Trust, um, which um, is involved uh, in all of this, yes. Um, Exmoor National Park Authority is absolutely brilliant. Um, North Devon National Trust, which has uh, its own herd at Countersbury, the, the Foreland herd. Um, so, yeah, yes, you yeah. know, and, we, and a good number... Because it the... needed to work, it needs to be a collective yeah. effort, doesn't it? It, it does need to no, be Oh, that's my effort. field of activity and that's my area. 
Yeah. All right, we've got about a minute left, and I promised my wife, who also loved the book, and you very kindly signed one for Jim Jam, who people, again, who follow me on social media know is my beloved grandson. Uh, and the bit my wife said, uh, if Dawn's coming in, you've got to say, this is my favourite bit, because it's a health warning, you see? They're not cuddly, silly little creatures. They are very naughty creatures as well lovely though they are exmals are nosy we like to explore especially if there's a half open door a nudge then a push a rim with the feeds uh, let's tip over these look here nuts and seeds it doesn't take long to create such a mess soon they come running out in a state of distress what did they eat oh no call the vet don't worry dear humans we're not ill just yet that <laughs> sums up an exmoor I found eight Exmoor ponies in our feed store once, and they did create a mess like that. They were the inspiration for that mess. Was that like one of Hugh Osman's um, uh, sort of buffet dining options, yeah. they, they, they do pick and choose. The other thing that we do have a serious problem with, uh, and that is when they live in, in lovely sunny leafy Hampshire, as opposed to on Exmoor, is they don't take to fences terribly well. Mm. And if a fence is in their line of progress, I fear quite often the fence will go, or they'll go through it, or they'll even go over it. They can jump like stags. You know, they learn all that out on the moor. They're fantastically agile. They're thick, stocky little ponies, but they jump amazingly well. Yeah. You've got other books with you? Oh, these are the three kind of real-life stories um, that I wrote oh, how beforehand. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, The Whispering, Wild, Wild Pony Whispering by Dawn as well, uh, worth looking up. Uh, in 30 seconds, if people care about this stuff like I do, where do they go? What's the website? Um, they can buy it at wildponywhispering.co.uk uh, or from my publisher, Housegrove, uh, or good bookshops. Brilliant. OK, and so good of you to come in, and uh, good luck with everything and everyone at home thinking of you. Thank and, you And uh, thanks much. for sharing this. Uh, and... Uh, it's a great story. And so there we are. It's a lovely, cuddly story, but also it's proper grown-up stuff as well about saving yet another species that we are blessed to enjoy uh, here on Earth. You're watching and listening to Alastair Stewart and Friends as we inch toward...